Um, hey, so um, I'm here with Ray Morris. I'm very excited. I was very lucky because my boyfriend um, gave me a present of a two-hour um, consultation with Ray Morris, who is um, one of the top makeup artists in Australia and, and around the world. And um, so it's, yeah, very exciting. And she's just done my makeup. And um, Can she's, you see the mess in the background? Yes, that's the mess <laughs> in the background of all of her gear and brushes and stuff like that. It's been very exciting. And um, uh, I'm, she's agreed to um, answer a few questions, yes. um, do a little interview. So, um, sh Ray, I know that you had a very interesting start to um, the makeup world. You, yes. Could you tell us a bit about yeah, that? Yeah, um, I was a hairdresser originally and how my makeup career actually happened completely accidentally. I was hairdressing and doing hair for the Miss Universe pageant in Europe and Naomi Campbell was in the corner having her makeup done and her makeup artist and her had a bit of a tiff. Cut a long story short, he stormed out, she glanced at me and said fix my lips and I'd never done makeup before. Completely terrified, went, I thought clear lip gloss, her lips are the size of a truck, I can't go too wrong. Picked up the lip gloss and then at that moment, something that it took five seconds and changed my life that she'll yep. never remember. Yep. The paparazzi walked in and just went nuts over her and I was photographed doing her makeup. So I got suddenly being booked as this international makeup artist. Yeah. I thought that could be nice. Yeah. So yeah, I so went and did some training and then yeah, career happened from there. Wow. And so when you were growing up, were you interested in makeup and... It's funny, you, you picture makeup artists growing up doing makeup the day they're born. Not really, I was a tomboy. Um, I can't draw to save my life. Yeah. I'm not. I didn't think I was. Well, I did art at school, but I was kicked out. My teacher called my parents up and told me she's the most frustrating, actually non-artistic student they've ever had, oh. and pulled me out and put me into accounting. I'm dyslexic. That's crazy. Oh. <laughs> um, and I wanted to be a vet, but I worked out later on every animal I was obsessed with. Great, would have done a farm or sort of farm in Brisbane. Call it yep. a farm. And every animal I loved um, had hair, so it was always, yep. I think it was a head, headdress is what I really wanted to be, but wasn't yep. quite sure. So I was always playing with hair. Yeah. Um, and I never, makeup was something that, I don't know, I just, it never really, I was like a tomboy, and like I said, happened accidentally. If someone said, you'd be a makeup artist, I'd go, no way, I can't yep. draw, I'm not arty. But yep. obviously I was, but didn't realise. Yeah. So, it, what would you say to someone who said that um, makeup artistry is sort of superficial and based on appearances and stuff like that? Well, appearance, the if we're, people are going to see the power of appearance, like I've worked with women, I've just done something like a lip gloss and a bit of foundation and I've had women feel so much better. Yeah. If it didn't affect you emotionally, I'd probably agree. Yeah. But when women feel beautiful, they, f they feel more in love with themselves. Yeah. And, you know, there's two ways you can look at this makeup where I do where the face is a canvas and... I can just go crazy and take fun pictures and it's the best job in the world and the power it has, especially on wedding days, you know, you see, when, you know, when a woman picks up a mirror, if I've had a good day and she's crying because she never looks so beautiful, I yeah. mean, people might think that, but I, maybe I've never done their makeup before, yeah. so maybe if I do their <laughs> makeup, change, yeah, change, yeah. you could change them. Yeah. <laughs> and they're funny, the they think the industry is like that, but never touched a drug in my life I don't party I work I you know I love my job and it's a very professional industry yeah cool and so, and maybe I'll just do this because oh yeah yeah um, <laughs> um yeah and um so you're the what's your role at L'Oreal and what does that involve okay I'm the L'Oreal Paris makeup director for Australia this is my fifth year yeah um my contract gets renewed every November so let's see I um, hope they'll yeah. have me again um it is an amazing job one because it's the largest cosmetic company in the world so you have access to knowing about the latest technology because L'Oreal normally invents it before it's filtered to anything else yeah. so that's great and also I'm responsible for any product launch in the country and also um L'Oreal Fashion Week so yeah. I direct eight shows yeah. um and direct trends and all the shoots for the magazine tomorrow I'm actually shooting um for Marie Claire doing the latest L'Oreal collection that's hidden in a box behind me that I can't oh, okay. show can't anyone, show anyone. but you'll, Marie Claire it comes out it's for the races so I'm sure the Marie Claire issue you'll see what I do tomorrow in October November yes, I think the, yeah no, probably good yeah something like that yeah. Yeah. yeah cool and so um what else is I going to ask you so you've also got a couple of or you've got one two books out mm. and then you've so you've got okay I'll explain yeah I've got I did um make up the ultimate guide six yep. times bestseller by the way Highest ever, highest ever. Um, they've got a copy here. Highest ever beauty book ever to be sold in Australia. Um, <laughs> this is a good one. Proceeds go to UNICEF. So even if you don't like makeup, buy it anyway because proceeds go to UNICEF. Um, and it's the best male present if men don't know what to buy someone. Um, and it's also been used in thirteen makeup schools international around the world as their curriculum. So it's not just it's a 
I mean, I wrote it thinking if probably one person might buy it. I never expected it to be successful. Um, they did bring out a second book called Beautiful Eyes. Now, it's it's not really, it's not a different book. It's just the same book compacted. Yeah. So it's yeah. just the eye chapter. And the one that I've written and re is released November the 1st, it's on stand. However, at IMATS, I've decided to pre-sell to many makeup artists. Yeah. So if you're around IMATS, come. I'll show you what the cover looks like. Unfortunately, it's framed. Um, so it's a bit glary, but... There it is. There, it's Sarah Stevens. And it's a bit reflective. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's Scoot called Express. <laughs> yeah, November one, and then yeah. I start writing my third book, which is a forties plus book. I'm not going to call it forty. I haven't got a name. If you've got a name suggestion, yeah, I need something that's going to appeal from women thirty to eighty, timeless ages. I don't know. So help me, I need to find ageless a title. beauty. Yes. Yeah, I think I think Bobby Brown did one uh, called right. Ages. I'm not sure, but I need a really good title. Yeah. So help me, please. Yeah. Be great. <laughs> Um, I've designed a brush range, and I swear, I, I will swear now, they are the best brushes in the world. Um, they're brushes that I used to pay three to four hundred dollars a brush many, many years ago, and I found where they've been made. And I'm, I'm, I'm not. They won't be selling for that price. Hopefully, they'll be cheap. I'm, I'm hoping they'll be cheaper than the matte brushes, but um, they are brushes that once you've used this as a makeup artist, what I've done is I've designed them. I've had about 20 samples sent, they're not good enough. And every brush I'm sending to the world's top 10 makeup artists, and if they don't say that is the best brush I have ever used, it's not going in the range. So I look out for that. It hasn't come out yet, I'm still working on it, but it should, yeah. should be out happy by IMAT, so yeah. very okay. soon. Awesome. Yeah. And um, so if you had five minutes yep. and you had no makeup on yep. and you had to get out the door, what yep. would you foundation but you and you can mix it with a moisturizer or get one that has a moisturizer and a sunscreen in it so you yes. get yeah. that mascara can't live without it like yeah. a mascara and i get a cream blush that i can go like that and on my lips out the door okay yeah. and comb your brows so that sounds like two yeah it's about two well done. yeah <laughs> or another trick if you want a beautiful really fine perfect little eyeliner yeah um don't be scared the night before you go to bed, get a coal pencil, a black or a brown or a grey, whatever you want. Yeah. Probably grey is a good one. Go inside your eye and like put so much coal pencil, go to bed. Don't wash it off. In the morning, panda eyes. Have a shower, wash your makeup off, and you get left with that really fine. fine We've had yeah. an eyelash tint. You yes. can't get it out, but it's perfect. It's yes. right around your eyeliner, so it's a good trick. I've yeah. done that before. Mm. Yeah. And um, also, so you've done my um, makeup today. Yeah. And. Um, I've got the kind of like hooded. Oh, yes. Some people call yes. them bedroom eyes. I've got it as well. That little bit of <laughs> Yeah. Hood. So, um, do you want to talk about? Yeah. Like, so I'll try and go as close need, as possible. Yeah. What you need to do is um, with when you do your makeup, if you've got like a bit of hooded, you've got ninety nine percent of your makeup looking straight ahead. What people do with hooded eyebrows, if, I don't know, they laugh, but I think it's such a waste of time. I see women they've got brows like that, and they go lift, eyeshadow, 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 drop lift i it's just crazy so do 99 percent look straight ahead and just remember whatever if you could get a magic wand look at your eye and look at what part do i want to push back if you want to if you've got this droopiness you want to push it back how you push it back is a dark matte brown it's got to be matte no shimmer you look straight ahead you just lightly just really blend that part that you don't like and the darkness will push it back, then tilt your head back and blend. So if your eyes are looking straight ahead, just turn yeah. back a little bit. What I did is I just did this slight little blend, but when you look just straight ahead, it just helps push back, give yeah. the illusion that the eyes are just, you know, that, that the hoodiness is not there. Yeah. But every, so many people have the hoodiness. And just keep all the definition around your eyes. Yeah. And yeah. don't shimmer, oh my goodness. The biggest crime, if you're hoodie, don't put white frosty shimmer there. It's okay. really bad. Yeah. No more white.